What's up everybody? It's the Storyteller here and I have a Bible story for you guys again. Starting with a brand new character in our story that will lead us to the end of the Genesis chapter. I'm really excited to begin the story for you guys. The story of Joseph. And his story starts like this. We start our story with Jacob deciding to settle down in the same area that his father Isaac wanted to settle down in. Now in the land where he was sojourning, he decided to let his sons take care of his flocks. One of his sons, Joseph, who was around the age of 17, was his most favorite amongst the brothers. Now Jacob favored Joseph among all of his other brothers to the point where he would give him gifts like a robe of multiple colors and Joseph being of 17 always tries his best um, but he does he didn't really have a popular standing with his brothers there was an incident one time when he did deliver a bad report of his brothers to his dad but other than that Joseph just does his best to do his best now one night Joseph had a very interesting dream. He had a dream that his brothers, as well as Joseph, were gathering wheat. They were gathering up the harvest. And all of a sudden, the sheaves of wheat that belonged to his brothers began to bow down to the sheaf of wheat that Joseph gathered up. So basically, his brother's properties were bowing down to him. And the next morning, Joseph told this to his brothers. Um, but his brothers didn't really take well to it. They started to tease him. They started to push him off a little bit. But a lot of them were a little bit upset and irritated to think that Joseph really believed there is going to be a time where they're going to bow down to him. The next night, Joseph had another interesting dream. And in that dream, it gets really surreal. This time, Joseph dreamt that 12 stars in the sky, as well as the sun and the moon, all came down to Joseph and bowed down at his feet. Twelve stars and the sun and the moon at the feet of Joseph. That's crazy. <laughs> now the next day, Joseph told his brothers about his dreams. And again, they were very irritated by his um by the dreams that he had, believing that people will one day bow down to him. Even his father Jacob had to admit that he was a little off-put, that Joseph really believed that one day they might bow down to him. A bit disrespectful for the younger to demand that of his elders. But Jacob held on to it in his heart to consider it for another, for another time. One day, Jacob's sons began to pasture to um, around the area of Shechem. But they were there for a long time. And so Jacob wanted to check up on them. He sent messengers over to find um, his sons, but they weren't there. So he sent Joseph to go look for them. Joseph went down to Shechem, and indeed, he couldn't find them anywhere. He had to ask a random passerby where his brothers went, if they had seen them and where they have gone. And the passerby said or mentioned that his brothers were not in Shechem anymore. They actually took off to an area called Dothan. So Joseph started to go over to where Dothan was just to go look for his brothers since his dad said to go look for his brothers. Simple as that. But while he was on his way down to Dothan, his brothers spotted him and they began to plot against him. In this particular day, his brothers were infuriated with Joseph, calling him dreamer. And they decided they had enough of it. They were at last putting to fruition their thoughts of getting rid of him. 
of killing him. Now the eldest, Reuben, he did not want Joseph to die. Now Reuben was able to convince his brothers enough to not kill the boy, but rather kind of rough him up a bit. When Joseph came close enough, they seized upon him, bruising him up, roughing him up a bit, taking his robes and tearing it to shreds, and then grabbing him, leading him over to an empty cistern, an empty well, and tossing him inside, watching as he fell down flat to the bottom of that well. Now as the brothers were roughing him up, Reuben snuck away, trying to get to his father. He wanted to at least let him know what was happening. But while he was away, a caravan came by the well. And his brothers had an interesting idea, a very profitable alternative. They consulted with each other and they came to an agreement that it would be a lot more profitable if they sold Joseph to the slave caravan rather than killing him. So they pulled the boy out of the well and they took him over to the caravan and sold him for silver coins. The caravan seized upon Joseph, tied him up with the rest of the slaves, and they started heading down to Egypt. Now Reuben got back after they sold the boy and when he saw that the well was empty he became ecstatic he became fearful agitated and angry he looked to his brothers and he was shouting at them where was the boy where is he where could he have gone and what did they do to him? And the brothers explained to him that they sold him for silver. And Reuben just couldn't believe that they did it. He said out loud, like, what is our dad gonna think? Which, oh my goodness, we forgot about dad. All the brothers finally realized, what are we gonna tell Jacob? So they went over to one of their flocks. They took a ram and they killed it. Taking the ram's blood, they brought it over to the shredded remains of Joseph's um, multicolored robe and smeared it down with the blood of the ram. They took those shreds and brought it over to Jacob and they told this story. They fabricated this lie, saying that a beast, a lion, came upon Joseph and ripped him to shreds and these ripped up remains of his robes was all that was left of Joseph. And when Jacob saw that, he fell into despair. He shouted and yelled, full of grief, overcome by sadness, because his son, Joseph, was gone. But Joseph wasn't dead. He was taken down to Egypt, where he was sold as a slave to one of Egypt's greatest officers, a chief officer of the Pharaoh named Potiphar. This story, right from the beginning, surprisingly, just within the beginning, there are so many surface lessons you can take. Obviously, the brothers were very cruel to their brother. Um, Reuben is a good ex um, lesson about doing things half-ass. He wanted to save. Um, he wanted to save Joseph, but he didn't want to look uncool to his brother. So he only did a half-ass job and still lost Joseph. Even Joseph is a lesson of bragging and probably misusing your spiritual gifts, using it in the wrong ways at the wrong time. But what really sticks out is something that we can easily miss. Yeah, I said it like that. 
What is interesting? What is interesting about this story is the underlying message that despite having this really difficult, surprisingly very mean-spirited situation to happen, despite this happening, God still has a plan. It looks like God is not in control, but He is. It looks like evil is winning, but it's not. Good is about to win, and good has already won. But it's just so hard to see it when all these bad things happen. And it's hard to wait for the good things to come about. And it's usually situations like that. In situations that we might have where it feels like all the evil in the world is winning. All of our luck is just run out and we're only getting the hard things. It looks like that we're just not going to get out of the hard situations we're in. It's so hard to see that God is still in control of our situations. Joseph had a hard time seeing it. But even he found out that everything works out in the end. And just as a bit of a spoiler, even Joseph himself says so in Genesis 50, 20. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. God used Joseph's amazingly bad situation as a way to set up a great good plan that saves Egypt, which we will soon see, which we will see very soon. And that's a lesson that's great for all of us, especially for me, it speaks out for me. Whatever situations that you're in, no matter how hard it looks, no matter how bad it is, no matter how long it is, and no matter how intense it looks, where it looks like evil is really winning and we are really losing, don't lose hope. God's still in control and he's still got a plan. Trust and still have faith in him.